I got a drawing due in two days and I haven't even started. Let's go to Michael's. No, no, no. I'm getting close, but where's the paper? How disappointing. Michael's doesn't have any singular sheet drawing paper. All they have is this three pack. So I guess there's only one place to go. That's right, the Lobby of Hobbies. The best place on earth to go if you're looking to sniff some potpourri, listen to some tenor saxophone jazz music, and see some moms. Here we are. Get some toned paper from Strathmore. Nice and smooth, good mid-tone gray. And we gotta get some pencils too, snatch those puppies up. And then some workable fixative to seal up our drawing. This is all I need. Let's get back to the studio and get to work. First step of the process is to trim our paper down to the appropriate size. The client requested a 9 by 12 portrait. It's a double portrait. It's going to be two young ladies. And so we're going to make our paper a 10 by 13. This gives us a half inch margin on all the sides so that they can map the image if they want and put it in a frame. And we're using this hardwood backer board with a couple sheets of paper underneath to prevent the texture of the board from transferring onto the image. And we're going to just tape it down really delicately just I'm talking like a 32nd of an inch with the tape so that we don't tear our paper later and this board will just help us protect the paper from getting any bends or wrinkles or anything like that during the drawing process now we're gonna project the image onto the paper using the photo reference that the client provided this is a sure way of making sure the portrait looks like the people all right we have our drawing pretty much prepped We've got the image transferred, and I want to talk about the materials that we're going to use for this drawing. So come over here. So since we are using a toned paper, a toned gray paper, here it is. Sketch that we transferred. See, it's kind of like a light mid-tone gray. That means that we're going to go both ways with our additive drawing process. The tones will be both darker and lighter. You can kind of see I have the white charcoal here and like the, all the highlights will be done with the white charcoal. And then we'll add darker values with pencils, graphite pencils. So I'm probably gonna be using this B pencil. It's like slightly softer than a number two pencil, which is HB. And that's what I've drawn all of these lines with so far as the B. And then I will probably also use this 3B, a few steps softer. B is basically soft, H is hard, so like this is a 2H pencil. Maybe I'll do some delicate shading and value with the 2H, pretty hard pencil. So basically the hardness of the pencil determines how much material will go on with pressure applied to the paper. So if it's hard, you can just lightly add value and it's not going to be like crumbly. Whereas like charcoal, so these pencils, or charcoal. There's another white one there and then there's a black charcoal and that's really soft so it's just gonna like put a lot of material on there with not much pressure. And you you can do a lot with pressure to get different tones but when you have these different pencils it allows you to have a bigger range of tones without having to have that finesse of the pressure and um, something to consider is also the tooth of the paper. This is a pretty smooth paper compared to some other drawing papers that have a heavier tooth which just gives it a texture but I'm going to use kind of a stylized shading technique of rubbing this material, this dry material on the paper. That will give it its own texture and I want it to be fairly smooth and, and photorealistic anyway. So those are the materials that we're using. I don't really use a blender. I'm just going to use the, the finesse that I talked about with that technique. Um, but we have it here just in case I need to smooth something out. And then of course the kneaded eraser. These are a must. And so I actually might use this for a little bit of subtractive 
technique. You know, I can like pull away some marks, provided that the tooth of the paper is is not damaged from me pressing the material on there. Anyway, and then of course you got to have a pencil sharpener to keep your pencil sharp. So without further ado, let's go ahead and just get started on this drawing. I'm just going to do a time lapse for you. Maybe I'll talk to you about the process a little more while I draw. But let's get down to it. All right, here we go. This is voiceover Alex, and I'm going to tell you a little bit more about this drawing process. This is very different than what I usually post on this channel. Typically I do paintings, um, but actually graphite drawings, pencil drawings, is how I got my start as a professional artist. It was back in high school that I first sold a pencil drawing. And I've been kind of doing it ever since. I'm 31 years old now. Um, actually, first I'm going to show you this cool pencil sharpener. It's a two-part pencil sharpener. The first part kind of exposes the lead, and the second part refines the overall shape of the lead. It's really important to have sharp pencils when you're drawing on paper um, because it allows you to, you know, fill the tooth of the paper. The tooth of the paper is basically just the texture of the paper that you're drawing on. This paper is actually pretty smooth. There is drawing paper that has a lot more texture to it than this. Um, this is Canson paper. That's the brand. Um, Canson, Strathmore, these are the good brands of drawing paper if you're looking to get into it and want to use some fine materials. Um, anyway, back to the history of my drawing career. I started drawing these pencil portraits back in high school um, and it was kind of like the only thing I would do. I would just do portraits and I ended up actually getting a gig with the local newspaper. Um, one of the banks in my hometown would sponsor these awards for local high school athletes um, that would be featured in the newspapers and they paid me to draw the portraits of the students and anyway uh, that's kind of how I got my start and eventually I went to college and, and started doing paintings um, but I just wanted to talk about the method of which I'm drawing so you saw me transfer the image using a projector and basically just using the exact portrait image um, and there's no shame in doing this if you're learning how to draw my high school art teacher shout out to mr. Frigil would always insist upon us starting out this way just using a direct transfer method because you could kind of learn how to build textures and and form without worrying about proportions and and how to draft a composition you could just get an image to be a complete drawing without knowing all those fundamentals and it was kind of like a, a cheat code but if you're doing a commission the clients never care how I did it they never ask me did you freehand that or did you trace it out from the image they just want it to look like their loved ones that they're paying you to draw so if you're getting started out I recommend this method if you have a projector you can use a, a light board whatever so I don't know hopefully this helped you can see I'm adding a little bit of a paint pen a Posca pen to get those last highlights so here it is the final image let me know what you think thanks for watching